It's Sunday the 10th of June 2018 and this is your EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon and good evening. And wherever you're listening around the world, a very warm welcome from London in the UK. Here is today's news about electric cars and the future of transport. My name is Martin Lee and I go through every EV article online so you don't have to. Well, a quickie today as we are away for the weekend. My wife and I heading away for some birthday celebrations this weekend. Sadly, not at the fully charged live event. Don't tell the person whose birthday party it is that we're not going to that uh, I'd quite like to be at that event, actually. Uh, But I haven't missed a single podcast yet. So with the portable mic with me, uh, maybe not in the proper studio, but hopefully we're getting away with this. Recording, by the way, in the the finest... (laughs) hotel room uh, that budget would allow. The budget's very small, by the way. Hey, it's clean, it's tidy, and uh, it's a nice weekend away. Uh, Other half is currently uh, out uh, buying a couple of uh, drinky poos for some free drinks before the party, uh, because where we are is very, very expensive. So a few of us having some, you know, it's like a few free drinks beforehand uh, just to get in the mood. Uh, Right. Well, before we get into the podcast uh, today, uh, I want to mention the fully uh, fully charged live event. Checking out my Twitter day one has been an enormous, huge success here in the UK at the Silverstone circuit uh, around the uh, kind of Northampton border. It's in the middle of the country. If you're not to where, it's where Formula One happens. Uh, you've heard of Silverstone, right? And uh, today it looked just like a fantastic event. 5,000 people turning up. Can you imagine the logistics of getting all those people in, feeding them all? Uh, who knows when they first put this event on, whether it's going to be attended by 500 people or 1,000 people. Oh, it's just been a huge, huge success so far. And a day two on Sunday, the 10th of June. Today, uh, the sessions at that include why mega trend Trump politics, nice. Uh, total cost of EG, EV ownership, uh, the STEM research for budding mines, electric vehicle myths busted, virtual power plants working in energy and technology beyond the electric car, and the electric car roundup as well. I've loved following it on Twitter today with all those uh, people who I follow have been there, and I can't wait uh, to uh, to head along next year. Well, this is show 146 of EV News Daily. Thursday next week will be show 150. I do love a round number. Now, we made some changes at uh, at show 100 based on listener feedback. So with a few days uh, to go, if you've uh, got any thoughts, anything you'd like to hear more or less of to add or improve, things you'd like to uh, hear differently, please do tweet me at evnewsdaily or email. I don't mention the email enough, actually. It's hello at evnewsdaily. That is hello at evnewsdaily. Well, coming up on today's podcast, we hear from the Aston Martin boss who has a warning for other CEOs about electrifying and the Jaguar I-Pace price in Canada. But first of all, let's get the pronunciation sorted for the brand new name of the Porsche Mission E. Oh, I did like that name, that Mission E name. It's called the Tai Con. Tai as in necktie, con as in con artist. It's spelt Taycan, it's pronounced Taycon. And of course, all names these days have to work worldwide, including particularly in the lucrative Chinese market. So uh, car names, whatever they're decided to be from now on, bearing in mind, they have to work in many different countries. So we're looking forward to the new Porsche Taycon. By the way, the Taycon will not be the name of the Cross Turismo, the kind of sporty one that you can put your skis in that we've been talking about uh, more recently. This is for the first car, the electric car Porsche, are releasing. We've now heard from the CEO of Porsche Cars North America, Klaus Zellner, who says this, and I quote, our dealers are telling us they can't have enough of this car, uh, and soon enough you can expect there will be some new faces in our dealerships and current customers adding a new all-electric Porsche to their garage. We anticipate roughly half of our vehicles sold by 2025 are going to be plug-in hybrids or full BEVs, he said. I quote, which leaves the other half for internal combustion platforms. So whilst some things change, others do not, Porsche will always be a Porsche, end quote. Well, yesterday on the podcast, I was talking to you about the announcement video, 30 or 30 odd seconds long on YouTube for the Taycan, and it uh, had a series of really cool images of the car, and it ended not only on the name, but also on their strap line, their tagline, if you like, and the words, Soul Electrified filled the screen. Soul electrified. And I was debating with you yesterday what that could mean, why they chose those two words, because clearly it's not an accident. You can always read 
something into those marketing decisions and there's more from Mr Zelmer today in line with what I was speculating yesterday uh, which is that Porsche I think are going to head off any criticism that a Porsche with a battery and that doesn't make roaring noises isn't really a Porsche. He said this and I quote, we intend to redefine the high performance e-vehicle segment with the Taycan. From day one our approach has been that a Porsche will always be the sports car of its segment regardless of its powertrain. And our first all-electric sports car will drive like a Porsche and offer the sportiness and everyday usability we are known for, end quote. All right, stat check on the Porsche Taycan then. 90 kilowatt hour battery, still seems small to me, but I mean, it's, actually, it's a big battery, but I thought for such an expensive car, let's face it, all Porsches are going to be $100,000 plus. Maybe they'd go bigger with the battery, but then you're adding weight. Anyway, two motors for each axle all-wheel drive 0 to 62 in 3.5 seconds and 800 volt and 350 kilowatt charge speeds which will add a hundred k's of range every four minutes wow right moving on and andy palmer is the boss of aston martin he's done an incredible job since he uh, joined uh, the company as uh, ceo and he's really turned it around some uh, bright futures at Aston Martin, uh, you could say, and it's uh, enjoyed a 58% increase in sales last year, first profit in eight years, and they are on their way to electrifying. He's had a few choice words of advice, or should that be choice words of warning for CEOs of other car makers, other mainstream car makers at least. He says that as everyday cars become more of a commodity, other car makers are going to need to differentiate to survive. And I quote Andy Palmer, I do believe we are at the beginning of the end of traditional automotive industry. Uh, for a long time, the business model has been stack them high, sell them cheap, but profitless volume is no way to build a sustainable company. It makes no sense to spend 1 billion euros on a new car and discount it almost at launch, he said. We risk moving forward commoditization of a pod. The world does not need dozens of nameplates making the same objects. There are more than 75 automotive nameplates in Europe, but just four plane makers, end quote. Uh, interesting stuff as, yeah, EVs are basically a computer and a battery. And that kind of commoditizes uh, exactly what he's saying. You know, cars, uh, people won't really care what badge is on the front if... The computer and battery you can buy from company A is cheaper than company B. That's probably the one you'll buy. They need to differentiate and have, oh, what's that phrase again? Soul, just like Porsche we're talking about. All right, let's move forward to the Jaguar I-Pace and we move to Canada. And uh, the Jaguar I-Pace has been showing up in my Twitter feed a lot today as it's one of the highlights of Fully Charged Live. But I've got some price details for our Canadian listeners now. If you haven't heard these yet, the electric SUV is going to start at $86,500 when it's on sale late summer. Putting that into perspective, the Tesla Model X starts at $110,000. And the stat check on the I-Pace, by the way, dual motors, 0 to 62 in a, at 4.5 seconds. And one pedal driving, really heavy regen, is going to get you 385 kilometers on a tank of electrons. 100 kilowatt DC fast charging on that. Well, the Polestar CEO, Thomas Ingelath, revealed on Thursday earlier this week that North America is, in fact, the brand's biggest market. According to a report on Automotive News, Ingelath shared the majority of the 500-plus buyers who've put a $2,500 non... Oh, no, it is refundable deposit on the Polestar 1 are all from North America. Uh, the... Yeesh. Cars first going to be shown. I think it's the Monterey Car Show week in August. You will first be able to see the Polestar 1 in the USA. It's going to be sold on a subscription basis. And a stat check on that, by the way. Hybrid powertrain, 2-litre engine with an electric motor on each axle and 93 miles of pure EV range. Well, heading back here to the UK, and Octopus Energies launched a new time-of-use tariff especially designed for bringing down the charging cost for EV owners, writes Catherine Leyland for City AM. The new tariff called Octopus Energy Go lets EV owners charge their cars at only 5 pence per kilowatt hour for four hours every night, which could make owning an EV ten times cheaper than having a car running on fossil fuels. Other existing initiatives to bring down the power cost for EV owners include the Economy 7 tariff, also known as the differential tariff, which has reduced rates for seven hours overnight. However, the GO tariff could be 
25% cheaper for those with an EV. Well, Rebecca Dib Simkin, the director of product for Octopus Energy, said this, and I quote, Octopus is passionate about driving the UK switch to EVs. We're delighted to use our innovative tech both to offer the cheapest kilowatt hour charge in the market and enable your car to automatically charge itself. A brilliant way to unlock those electric car savings, end quote. How do you charge your EV wherever you're listening around the world? Let us know in the comments or email hello at evnewsdaily.com. What price do you get? Can you beat five pence or the equivalent per kilowatt hour? On to Ryder, and Ryder's placed an order of 500 electric vans for its North American EV truck rental and lease fleet. That's on top of the 125 vans already on order. Dennis Cook, the president of Global Fleet Management Solutions for Ryder, catchy job title, said this, Ryder continues to see the broadening interest in EVs from businesses and various sizes and industries, and especially from those companies in the parcel slash final mile slash beverage delivery space. Additionally, there's interest from customers who have daily return to base routes between 40 and 100 miles and in markets with incentives available for electric vehicles. Companies continue to identify the potential long-term cost, environmental and efficiency benefits of EVs." End quote. Well, the final story today is about why you might only need to charge your EV once a week. Consumer perceptions and fears about driving range of electric cars are often blamed as a major reason for the lack of take-up, but a new report illustrates how those ideas are ill-founded. According to reneweconomy.com.au, in Australia, the average commuter travels 38 kilometres every day. According to these figures, the Nissan Leaf uh, once it's available in the UK, the new 40 kilowatt hour model uh, would only need to have to be charged once per week. The Tesla Model S, on the other hand, would only need to plug in once every 12 days. As it turns out, most EV owners top up, anyway, overnight at home. Whilst charging times for EV drivers on long distance trips may not be quite desirable yet, one thing is clear, range anxiety for those commuting or in the city is not a valid concern, says this report. And that's interesting. I'll just end by saying that I had a bit of a, um, a Twitter discussion earlier this week. The AA, the Automobile Association, uh, earlier this week put out a report to the UK press, which was quite, I don't know, I'm not going to say disparaging towards EV. I'm just saying that the phrase they used was this, 32 million cars on the road and they said 32 million EVs can't all plug in at once. The infrastructure simply isn't ready. But yeah, I mean, it, I found it obvious. You probably find it obvious because you're interested in, in, in electric cars. But as I replied to a few people who were commenting on the story, I, I, I had to kind of point out that the AA here, the Automobile Association, who should know better, are either working from a position of misinformation in that they just haven't had the right people talking to them about EVs, in which case I can recommend a wildly unpopular podcast they could start with. <laughs> they want to subscribe to this. Or they're working from a position of disinformation, which, okay, but I mean, let's go with that theory in the fact that they know better and they're, they're putting something out there which they know not to be true. I don't believe that. As a few people pointed out to me on Twitter this week, their main business model, although they've got things like AA insurance and all those other things, their main business model is still really about fixing cars on the side of the road and recovery and all those kind of things. Ice cars break down a lot, EVs don't break down so much. It, it's not a good business to be in if electric cars are around the corner. I will leave it there with no comment. I'd love to spread the word about electric cars. If you can share this, share this with somebody who might be interested, please do so. If you are heading along to Fully Charged Live Day 2, have a wonderful day. Have fun. Say hi to everyone. Uh, make some new friends. Drive safely home. And you can listen to every previous episode of this podcast on iTunes, Google Play, Spotify, YouTube, TuneIn, Stitcher, and the blog at evnewsdaily.com. If you want to subscribe, you get it first and free and automatically. If you could take a couple of minutes to rate and review, I'd appreciate it. I know you're busy, so no worries. And if you want to say hi on the socials, search EV News Daily. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.